Hi, this is Stu, and we're at Papua Valley, and we've grabbed David Robson because we want to have a little talk about knees, because it's such a problem for many people, and for the most part, totally unnecessary that people are hurting their knees if they're a little bit more sensible and, and careful about what they're doing. So we'll go straight into David, and you can tell us what you see and what sort of the things they need to do. Okay. Um, most of the time, uh, what I see is people not treating the knee like uh, the joint that it is, yeah. which is a hinge. Mm. Um, and they're trying to get movement out of the out of the joint in the knee instead of the movement from the hip. And um, sort of a really easy um, sort of demonstration of that is just that people tend to lift their foot up before the knee is closed. Mm -hmm. And um, when we're lifting our foot up higher than our our thigh bone, then the movement has to come from the knee. So anytime anyone tells me that they have uh, pain in the knee, yes. the first thing I get them to do is show me how they go into half lotus. And it has to be like 80 or 90% of the time, people are just lifting the foot. So sort of levering they, it. Coming, yeah. Exactly, mm. and, and putting torque pressure on mm. the joint. And it's such a simple solution um, about how to not hurt your knee, is just to close the knee joint before you try to lift the foot. Yeah. And then any lifting comes from rolling the thigh out so the movement comes from the femur and the hip instead of the the shin separating from the thigh yeah yeah so it, it's such an easy one but um i guess the root of that is rushing you know is that sometimes we can't get the foot to lift because the thigh won't rotate because the hip is tight and we still want it there yeah mm. and and so um trying to force it in and you know I, i've had like my share of pain in the practice and and issues coming up the one thing that I would say doesn't sort of resolve as you go into it is the knees. Mm. You know, I, I can kind of work through a lot of stuff in my body, but uh, it seems like anything in my knee, as soon as it shows up, I have to back off. Yeah. You, it doesn't, uh, you can't sit with it. You no, can't, it's, yeah. a, it's a different type of, it's, it's not muscle tension, it's, it's pain from the fact that your knee doesn't want to go into that particular position. Yeah. Yeah, and it's vulnerable. Yeah. And so close the, close the knee joint, and that goes with your standing or seated, so yep, the same, exactly the same. Adam had it's yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. And particular ones that you think people are more vulnerable in, obviously all the half pad masses, but it's also like the likes of, for me, Mary Chesna, B and D, uh -huh. where you're adding another complication. Yeah, putting with pressure the, on it mm, with the bent leg, absolutely, mm. yeah. I mean, if you can go into half lotus, say that your, your hip is healthy enough to, mm. to be able to get the foot into position, you also have to make sure that you're putting the foot high enough mm. on your leg. So mm. it has to come all the way up so that the ankle is also supported by the thigh. And would, would you say that the, the outside edge of the foot needs to be in the crease of the hip? Yeah, ideally, hip, that ideally. would be good. If you can get there, that's mm. the best, right? And the, the heel? The, then the heel is going to be in the correct spot, which is just to the outside of the navel, yeah. and you'll get the pressure in the right place in the organs when you bring the leg back. Yeah. And you'll save the uh, the ankle as well. That's exactly, <laughs> from sickling to, yeah, yeah. which is the next vulnerable joint e down that chain. Exactly, yeah. so so many people have uh, pain in the, you know, the ligament or the mm. tendons getting overstretched as they're, as they're kind of collapsing the ankle mm. down. Mm. So it, it's about getting there, but again, it's, it's, that's a hard thing to do because it requires a lot of mo uh, mobility in the hip. Yeah. And so if you're not all the way there, um, what I teach my students is to do something like this. Yeah. Uh, because um, this, this action, either for something like Ardha Baddha Padma Paschimottanasana as an alternative to half lotus, or even Marachasana B, where we could bring the foot back, is yeah. going to start to go straight into the hip. Yeah. And so it'll, it'll start to change the hip, and hopefully that'll get you, you know, into half lotus mm -hmm. and then all the way in, as opposed to either Janushashasana or just putting the leg on the floor here, which I feel like doesn't really address the issue. It's easy for, to escape out of the resistance, isn't yeah. it, in that position? Yeah, but I can see why we would do it, because it looks more like the, like posture. the posture. Yeah. Mm. And so, uh, what are you, what's your feeling with the, the knee, as in Mayachasana BD, floating in the air? Does it, is it the priority to get the knee down mm -hmm. or the hip up, which lifts the hip, or the hip down and the knee lands up, kind of? Well, um, for Marachas and a BND, in terms of conditions of the pose, traditionally, mm. there's only one hip on the floor. So okay. the lotus hip is down, but the other hip is up. Mm. And so it's the tilt of the pelvis that can bring the knee down to the floor mm. instead of the length. Yeah. Uh, I know some people can bring both hips down. Um, they've got long there's femurs few, yeah. or, or they're that mm. open or, or whatever. But um, 
I think forcing it is going to be another issue because you, even when the knee joint is closed properly, you can still put torque pressure on it yeah. because the foot's trapped up high and then pushing down exactly. with the hip. Yeah. So I, I would say even in, in half in Ardha Buddha, Padma Pashmatanasana, never push the knee down. But again, it's, it's the um, angling of the hip. So coming into more of an anterior tilt mm. that starts to direct the femur down towards the floor. And so where, where would you say is an unhealthy height? Because it's okay if the knee maybe is only that far off the floor. Yeah. If it's but if when you bring it in, it's still this it, far off the floor. Yeah, it's probably telling you something, right? Yeah. Like, back off. It's not, not time to do this. Yeah. yeah. I think when, if people are way up here, mm. then they're going to have a hard time folding forward anyways because their hips are held in the posterior tilt. Yeah. So they can't even get into... Mm. And then it's kind of putting too much weight on one result you know, yeah. and, and kind of not doing the rest of it. So again, I would always go here. Yeah. The thing about this too, as a modification, we call it flamingo pose. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's a, a real name for it. Because you've got one straight leg? Yeah. And like as one leg then? Yeah. yeah. So um, is that I, I don't think it's useful either to slowly work your way into depth up here. Okay. Because a lot of the time people come into that position where they start torquing again. They haven't yes. closed the knee joint. Yeah. So it's either flamingo or, or half flow. lotus. So not one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then... Um, uh, Flamingo sounds very sort of floaty for a hardcore Ashtangi. Yeah, it sounds relaxing, it doesn't, doesn't it? It does, yeah. it's not It's not a tradition. I mean, there aren't really any alternatives in no. the tradition, or you know, but um, I know that some of my students have gone to Mysore doing this, and they haven't really got called out. So. Have they not? That's interesting. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, it's yes, we want to be close to the posture that... that uh, supposedly, but you can't break your body on the way there no. because then you're not going to be doing any of it, right? Yeah. So it's important and the knees are, are so vulnerable. Yeah, and what if you were injure it, you know, mm. and, and it's already injured mm. and you just need to baby it for a little while. Mm. You need some option, mm. yeah. And so do you see any other, so we have the half pad medicines, but I also think that people can put stress on their knees in the things like Warrior Two and Presarita Padmasana where the legs are wide, mm -hmm. if they end up sinking and, not, and then they're putting stress on yeah. the medial collateral ligament. Right, yeah. So some actions there that people can think of to actually yeah. keep out of that. Well I, well, I would say balance the weight across the feet. Yeah. So make sure that you're not coming into the inner arch of the feet or pronating the ankles. Yeah. Um, um, keeping the whole leg active. I, mm. Whenever I'm in doing a forward bend, the standing or sitting, yes. I, I try to really engage my legs. So okay. not lock them, but really press down through the feet and, yeah. and keep the whole leg active. So, so more like the co-contraction, so both sides of the joint exactly, as active as yeah. possible. Yeah, because a, a lot of the time, yeah, it's that there's a collapse happening, mm. right? On Somewhere. one side, mm. yeah. Yeah, what do you tell them? Yeah, the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Just be very active, and if it's like that warrior two or the press reach progress, think of the lift of the inner mm -hmm. groin lifting up rather than the collapsing down. And particularly vulnerable, there's people that have got already fallen arches or that sort of thing, right. where the foot wants to drop in on the inside yeah. edge. So anything like that, then it's going to be shoved yeah. up up to the knee. So just keep lifting, lifting on the inner groin. Yeah, I think is quite good. Yeah. You'll always kind of, uh, at first, you're going to collapse into the weak areas, right? Mm. That's where you'll mm. feel them. I remember when I started, uh, I would always feel it on the outside of my ankles. Okay. Across the Rita Yes. Yeah, I would yeah. just kind of let the ankles roll out. Yeah. And so it, it took me a while to figure it out. What was happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think like you were saying before, you can gain the strength in the ankles and the feet with a lot of the standing balancing postures, can't you? So yeah. like Uttita Hatsbalangstasana is a great one for learning the control of the ankle and the leg if you actually bring that into your mindset yeah because otherwise you will those same patterns will happen you'll collapse on the inside of the ankle your weight will shift yeah. whereas that sort of is a real challenging thing particularly with people with mobile ankles yeah so a great time to actually strengthen which then comes into the, the strength into the other postures as well yeah there's something about being active yes. in the posture yeah. yes yeah. Than easy in those standing poses to just Mm. flop into them, lock your legs, or mm. collapse down, take the easiest path. Yeah. And so, yeah, it requires that extra step. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, so be, you know, be respectful of your ankles. Remember, they're a modified hinge. They're not meant, they're not that talking. They, they, f they flex at the knee, so it's this action, yeah. They do rotate when they're bent, so they do, there is that action, but it's not an action that we want to actually... Um, promote that much, which maybe while we're thinking of knees, we could talk about also Janusha Shasana's C yeah. <laughs> and the way of getting into yeah. that that doesn't also create more talking. Yeah. Yeah. 
So if you are a favoured way, is, are you also then for a deep flexion locking then, yeah. and then moving the, the whole thing together? Way. Yeah, the, the hardest way. So can way you just in, show yeah. us that while okay. so they know what we're talking about? So Janushrishas to see, maybe the best way is like this, yeah. is uh, you know to turn the toes underneath. So a lot of the time what I see, I'll do it mm. the wrong way first, yeah. is, is people just turning That's the, the shin. Yeah. And so they're opening up the joint mm. on the inside and it's a little bit of torque. And yeah. then I guess and it, then the deeper rotating. you go, the lower yeah. leg is rotating relative to the upper. But leg. nothing's changed mm. in Nothing the femur at all. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so what I would do is, I think all the Janushashasanas, um, you start with external rotation to get in, yeah. and then go into internal rotation in your forward bend. So uh, A and B goes deeper, and then C is the deepest. So we go all the way from here with the closed knee joint, and then try to keep that same angle and move from the femur in the hip. Yeah. So that I, I kind of maintain the same relationship between the shin and the thigh here. And it's me trying to roll the whole femur over the shin bone. And what I find that really gets into is, is the, uh, the hip itself. Yeah. I start to feel a lot in the piriformis and the glute medius in the yeah. back. And I think those are the, the target areas for those postures. More than the knees. More than the knees, <laughs> yeah, so exactly. Yeah, we can flex the knee. That's not an issue most of the time. Mm -hmm. It is for some people. And actually, that is something else that you can think about, actually, while we're on the knees. That that quite often, uh, the, the quick way to check out how much flexion you've got in the knee is just to flip onto your back and get somebody to take your, sorry, flip onto your tummy and get somebody to take your heel to your bum. And if it stops that far from your bum, then you're gonna have difficulty completely closing the knee joint. And for me, that also makes people a little bit more vulnerable in these half pad masters because if you can't fully close it, then it's much more likely to be some levering going on. So you can work on some lengthening of the front of the, yeah. the upper leg as well um, with some quad stretches, just so as to, to be able to create more closure here, which is going to be make it much more secure. So you'd say yeah. it's a limitation here that... Yeah, yeah. some of it, when, there's mm -hmm. not, when you can't really close and it's like that much, mm -hmm. then there's much more chance of levering For than sure. when you can really get it there. Yeah. But you can only get it there if you've got length here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a... Yeah, it's a game, but the main thing is not to, not to force it, because it will stop you dead in your tracks, you know, and so many people you know about, you know, have had meniscus stuff, you know, surgeries and that sort of thing, which is crazy when we're doing yoga, which is meant to be teaching about our relationship to our body and subtle energy, isn't it? So yeah. sometimes things happen, sometimes we fall or something goes wrong, but it's really a shame when it's a repeated abuse of the body really that causes the injury. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So be careful and um, hopefully we'll have some more with David on some other topics as well.